Hey, it's Jordan with Status Coup. Uh, Herschel Walker continues to play top cop. And Carrie Lake, who might become the next governor of Arizona, uh, is openly saying she will not accept the election results if she actually loses. Uh, let's start with Herschel Walker. Uh, I just I don't even know anymore. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I'll just play the original uh, Walker uh playing a police officer. Uh, this is from his debate uh, with Senator Raphael Warnock uh, last week. Accountable. One thing I have not done, I've never pretended to be a police officer <laughs> and, and, and I've, never, I've never threatened a shootout with the police. Well, and now I have to respond to we that. Are, we are, we are no, moving no, no, on, no. gentlemen. I have to respond to that. And you know what's so funny? I am work with many police officers, <laughs> and at the same time, Mr. Pastor, Walker, Mr. Walker, no, no, Mr. Walker, no, no, no. Mr. Walker, Walker excuse me, truth, Mr. Walker, when please, he a out of respect, truth, I, I, I need here. to let you know, Mr. Yes. Walker, you are very well yes. aware of the rules tonight, Yes. and you have a prop. Yes. That is not allowed, sir. Yes. I ask you to put that prop away. Well, it's not a prop. It, this it, is real. Uh, Herschel Walker's got uh, quite a lot of Donald Trump in him, doesn't he? Uh, Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker has quite a lot uh, of Donald Trump in him. Uh, it, it's just unbelievable. Uh, so obviously the media uh, has seized on the um, fake police uh, thing. Uh, not as much actually questioning him critically on, uh, you know, claims and reports of domestic battery, uh, of obviously of uh, really, really uh, troublesome things in terms of his parenting uh, his role as a husband, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, in an interview this morning, Kirsten Welker with NBC pushed him further on the whole police badge thing. I mean, this is not SNL. This, this is real life. And where's this right. one from? This is from my hometown. This is from Johnson County, from the sheriff from Johnson County, which is a legit badge. Everyone can make fun, but this badge, give me the right. If I, let me finish. If anything happened in this county, I have the right to work with the police and getting things done. Walker saying he's participated in training and leadership programs with law enforcement for years. Does that have a resting authority or it's an honorary badge? It is an honorary badge, but they can call me whenever they want me and I have the authority to do things for them, to work with them on things. The National Sheriff's Association said an honorary badge, quote, is for the trophy case. Why make the decision well, to flash totally, it at the that debate? That is totally not true. The Johnson County Sheriff confirms to NBC News he gave Walker the honorary badge and could enlist Walker's help in a crisis. Yeah. So he's obviously lying. Um, I don't know. Well, I do know. But, uh, you know, if it were I, I'd say, why are you lying to the American people? I mean, you don't just get, get a badge as a gift and then get to, uh, you know, Go arrest people at a protest unless you think you're Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, but it, it's astounding. It's absolutely astounding. I love the part of the end that the Johnson County Sheriff confirmed that in an extreme situation, he could rely on Mr. Walker. Uh, of course, Herschel Walker has never worked for the police. He doesn't have any arresting authority. Uh, maybe in this new Republican Party where, you know, election results don't matter. Up is down. Supreme Court, you know, uh, bends and breaks the law. Uh, maybe he would. I, I don't know. But it, it, it's just it's really unbelievable. And just this is from the Atlanta Journal Con Constitution. Uh, if you want any more details on Mr. Walker's uh, apparent work for the police uh, in September 2019, Herschel Walker stood in front of an auditorium of soldiers in combat fatigues at Joint Base Lewis uh, McCord. The motivational talk was by now familiar. Walker traced the obstacles he had overcome, including his struggle with mental health. But more than 30 minutes into the speech, Walker wandered off topic. Quote, I worked for law enforcement. Y'all didn't know that either, he said. I spent time at Quantico at the FBI training school. Y'all didn't know I was an agent? It wasn't the first time Walker said he was in law enforcement. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution found while reviewing dozens of speeches, speeches and motivational talks by Walker that were posted online, quote, I work with the Cobb County Police Department and I've been in criminal justice all my life, he said in 2017. In 2000, he told Irving, Texas police, that he was, quote, a certified peace officer, according to a police report, and he has used his alleged law enforcement ties to justify why he has had a gun 
including a 2001 incident when he pursued a man who was late delivering a car. Quote, I worked in law enforcement, so I had a gun. I put this gun in my holster and I said, quote, I'm going to kill this dude. He said at a 2013 suicide prevention event for the U.S. Army. Walker has said that incident spurred him to seek mental health treatment. The claims, which appear to have halted since he, since he entered the U.S. Senate race, aren't true. Asked about the claims by Atlanta Journal, Council, uh, Atlanta Journal Constitution, a Walker campaign spokesperson said that he majored in criminal justice at the University of Georgia and, quote, has supported and worked with law enforcement for years, including speaking to police about mental health, leading women's self-defense training, and participating in the FBI Academy at Quantico. Uh, she added he was an honorary deputy in Cobb County, along with three other Georgia counties, but did not specify which ones. The Cobb County Police Department said it had no record of involvement with Walker. <laughs> the Cobb Sheriff's Office could not say whether he has, uh, whether he was an honorary deputy. Well, you know, uh, the good thing about Herschel Walker is if he becomes senator and there's another January 6th type thing, you know, he could come out uh, of the Senate and, you know, police the protesters, even though he'd probably be possibly with the protesters, Stormy the Capitol, who knows? Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is part of kind of the post-truth society. And if you had a Democratic Party that actually had a message economically, and to have a message, you need policies economically, right? So if Raphael Warnock uh, wasn't just kind of, you know, your card-carrying uh, moderate Democrat in Georgia, even though, yeah, it's a red state, but I'm pretty sure uh, health care, I'm pretty sure uh, raising the minimum wage, I'm pretty sure, um, you know, actually canceling student loan debt, I'm pretty sure fixing the roads, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, maybe, just maybe, uh, not policing the rest of the world and spending trillions on that, maybe putting some money into that back into Georgia. If Raphael Warnock, I don't know, call me radical, uh, was proposing to uh, ex ex Medicare for all and those kind of things, you might say, no, that won't play in Georgia. Well, in 2020, every single Democratic primary, including in deep South states, Medicare for all had majority support. And I would, I would suggest to you that economically, if presented a certain way to states like Georgia, uh, that could be incredibly popular as a candidate. So if Raphael Warnock was actually proposing anything economically other than, uh, hey, we did the Inflation Reduction Act, which really is crumbs, and hey, oh, we gave you a $1,400 check. Uh, if he was proposing anything bold and populist, uh, Herschel Walker, I, I would implore you, would not even have a chance uh, because we just saw uh, uh, in Georgia, it has shifted a little bit more blue. You've had more black voters come out in 2020 for Biden, uh, in 2020 in the special election that put uh, Warnock and Ossoff in the Senate. So it's not as deep red as it used to be. Sure, even Democratic voters might be a little bit more moderate, but they do want relief economically. But because you have somebody like Raphael Warnock, who's running a milk toast campaign, uh, and just putting out, you know, nice, uh, nice phrases as a pastor. Uh, it's letting a jack off jackass like this, who's running around with a toy badge, actually within shouting distance at winning the Senate. And this is a problem as a journalist. It's very concerning. Honestly, facts don't matter anymore. And this is kind of the Trumpification of politics. Um, what used to be scandals, right? Like 10 years ago, if Herschel Walker was it was shown that Herschel Walker, who's running on abortion with no uh, no exceptions, that he paid for multiple abortions or at least one that we know of, uh, that might be disqualified, might be disqualifying. Now, even though there's receipts, he signed checks, he wrote a card. He just says that's a lie and repeat the lie, repeat the lie, repeat the lie. It just rolls off of him even though he lies about being a peace officer and uh, having uh, arrest authority from the Cobb County Sheriff, I get, it doesn't matter. And the media is part of the problem because she gingerly, very gingerly questioned him about it. She did not push back. 
She did not challenge Drummond. She didn't say, uh, respectfully, you're lying to the American people. You're lying to Georgia voters. There is no evidence that you have uh, any police authority. Uh, and what does that say uh, to the voters of Georgia if they elect you? Are you going to be dishonest with them as a senator? Uh, oh, God, journalism in this country, junkalism. Uh, but not to be outdone, uh, Herschel Walker uh, is playing toy cop uh, or, you know, uh, running around with his toy badge. But Carrie Lake, who is kind of, you know, the Trump, uh, uh, one of the Trumpiest uh, Republican candidates out there, uh, she's just flat out saying or refusing to answer whether she will accept the election results uh, if she loses. This is from her interview uh, yesterday on CNN. Hobbs My question won't. is, will you accept the results of your election in November? I'm going to win the election and I will accept that result. If you lose, will you accept that? I'm going to win the election and I will accept that result. Listen, I'm not really one of these, uh, oh, democracy is at stake, because we don't actually have a democracy. We live in the United Corporations of America right behind me. Uh, you can't really say you have a democracy if the person who wins the most votes don't, doesn't win, talking about the popular vote. Uh, the Electoral College is an undemocratic uh, system, and we don't actually have a democracy. A 2014 Princeton study said we actually have an oligarchy, uh, judging by uh, the amount of legislation that passes. Typically, uh, about nearly half of the time, legislation that passes reflects uh, the will of the donors, the elite, and very, very little of the time does legislation that pass uh, actually represent popular uh, majority support. So democracy was already on kind of thin ice uh, before Trump, but the idea of what a democracy should be, it is very dangerous when it's just flat out. They're not even, they're not even messing around. Uh, they're just straight up saying, yeah, no, I'll accept it if I win. And there's a significant portion of the voting electorate who not only doesn't mind that, but that's actually a sales, that's a selling point for the candidate. Just straight up denial of elections, straight up denial of results. Uh, that's how, frankly, authoritarian or fascist uh, fascism uh, develops. Uh, we've seen that throughout history where, you know, dictatorships form, um, political violence forms when you basically the, the few tenets of uh, dem democracy, which is free and fair elections. And trust me, we don't necessarily have free and fair elections. I'm not really talking about, you know, the Republican nonsense uh, as far as Trump. He did lose. But obviously, as we've covered over the years, we have plenty of rigging that goes on, particularly during the Democratic uh, primaries. But if you have candidates just proudly running on, yeah, no, I'll accept it if I win. If I don't win, it's 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 rigged. Um, we're in trouble. And that does, you know, whether you're critical of the Democratic Party or not, and I am, we are in trouble of even corporatist Democrats win. They're just going to deny it. Republicans are just going to deny it. And what happens if by dumb luck or there is a God, uh, an actual progressive candidate wins the presidency one day? They, we're already seeing they're not going to accept it. And do we necessarily believe the Democratic establishment <laughs> would be you know, propping up democracy and we have to uh, fight these Republican election deniers if it was Nina Turner who won, Marianne Williamson who won, name your progressive if if a progressive actually won the presidency. So uh, these are trying times and very scary, uh, the continued uh, development of this post-truth society.